what seems harmless, but is incredibly dangerous. Putting your feet up on the dash while riding as a passenger in a moving car. You do not want to see post-accident photos of what happens when someone is in that posture in a surprise head-on collision. Lint too much lint in a dryer can cause a fire. I gotta clean that stuff out on the regular. Water in general, but fast moving water specifically to 3 inches of water is all that's needed to sweep you off of your feet if it's moving fast. 12 inches of water will lift and sweep away a car. Water is heavy and will asterisk 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 you up if you don't respect it. Garage door springs. I DIY a lot of things, but after reading about door springs I'll let the professionals handle it. Throwing your friend in the pool. Over the counter medicines. Just because you can get something without a prescription, does not mean it's safe in all cases, or in high doses. Walking off the boardwalks at Yellowstone. They have several signs pressing that, even though the ground may look normal in those areas it could be really thin. I've seen people do it anyway. Look safe, safe. Weirdly specific, but leaking hydraulic fluid from a small crack in a pressurized manifold. It doesn't shoot out like a gas would, instead looks like droplets, but if you put your thumb over it, it shoots toxic hydraulic fluid into your bloodstream. Cute little palm sized octopi with cute little blue rings on it. Edit, many people are saying octopi is incorrect. It's registered in the Cambridge Dictionary as a plural form. But then again, so is the word ain't. Texting cowalkers after you've been drinking. Dull knives. Dull knives are far more likely to cause an incident compared to a sharp one. Pushing people over as a prank. Grapefruit juice. By itself it's perfectly fine. But a lot of people aren't aware that grapefruit juice specifically has interactions with a lot of different drugs, both medical and recreational, and can be potentially very dangerous when combined. Edit, I know everyone hates edits, this got way more attention than anticipated, and I didn't cite any sources in my original post, so, don't take my word for it, I'm just some random internet guy. Here's a page from the FDA, on interactions between grapefruit and several medications. Edit by request, I'm seeing a lot of replies saying, that CBD may have similar interactions to grapefruit juice. To be absolutely clear here, I have no idea, whether this is accurate or not. This is the first I've heard of it, I've done zero research, and I'm definitely not qualified to speculate on the subject. That said however, enough people have brought it up, that it seems at least worth mentioning. If you are a CBD user, and concerned about possible interactions with medications or other substances please consult a qualified medical professional for advice. Here are a couple of links on the subject of CBD and drug interactions courtesy of user energy take a lad. Harvard Health, CBD and other medications, proceed with caution. Forbes, what grapefruit and CBD have in common when it comes to drug interactions. There's that Peppa Pig episode about spiders teaching UK kids that they are nice and friendly, and that episode is banned in Australia. So there you go, here's my answer, Peppa Pig episodes. Jumping on a trampoline. Silence in a house with toddlers. Eating raw or undercooked kidney beans can make you very sick or even kill you. It only takes like 3 undercooked kidney beans to ruin your day. Cat bites. Cat fangs puncture deep and trap bacteria deep within your tissue, leading to horrible infections. You might think one isn't serious, because it's not bleeding much, but that just means the wound isn't flushing properly. If you get seriously bitten by a cat, it's very important to go to urgent care, so they can properly disinfect the wound. The cinnamon challenge that was all the rage a few years back. When aspirated, it can cause severe burns on mask passages and airways. Edit, nasal, not mask, but it kind of worked anyway. Cleaning ammonia with bleach. Giving grapes to dogs. They are quite toxic. Confined spaces, above ground or worse, below the surface. If you do urban exploration, caving, or anything like that, 
get a four gas detector, a it to your chest or belt, and set the alarm to maximum. If it makes a sound, get the asterisk 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 out, or you are going to die. Texting while driving. You might think this is obvious, but I see many people texting and driving every day. Not cool and definitely not safe. Unprotected sex. Pushing someone's face into a cake as a joke. Some cakes have little wooden spikes inside to support the cake. For a post, where a girl's face was gored by one of these. Climbing a ladder. It doesn't even have to be a big ladder. Even one of those two step ladders are incredibly dangerous. One ill placed step can change your entire life. A child. Alone they may not seem like much, but in groups they can cause mass havoc. A nurse. I had a teenage girl come from home economics class. She was sewing, and had a pin between her lips. I mean, who hasn't done that? She sucked it in, and it got lodged in her throat. While waiting for a scope she felt it dislodge and went deep into her main bronchial. She required major surgery. Had a young boy running with a toothbrush in his mouth. Got jammed way deep, almost hit a major artery. Plutonium, if no one told you what it was you'd think it was just a random piece of metal. For kids, someone online with a sympathetic ear for their problems. Responsible adults will try to put you in touch with real life help, not encourage a pattern of reliance and inappropriate intimacy. Burst danger points on anyone who throws down you're really mature for your age. Predators online work just like real life hunting predators. Their first goal is to separate you from your herd. Having a loose animal in the car. A safety instructor once told me doctors had to dig dog bones out of a person after it got between them and an airbag. This thread. It's making me not want to leave the house ever again. Kids picking flowers in the park. I'm a conservation technician for a county park system. At least once a year I have to stop parents with kids picking flowers off the trail, because I see kids with either poison hemlock, one of the deadliest plants, if ingesting even a tiny amount, or wild parsnip, which can cause some serious permanent scarring, burns, and boils if the sap gets onto your skin, and is exposed to sunlight. Don't let your kids pick or eat anything you aren't 100% sure of. Following too closely in your car. Not just tailgating, but even following 50 plus feet behind in fast traffic. Next time you're in your car, wait for the car in front of you to pass a clear marker like an exit sign or a bridge, then count the seconds until you reach this marker. This is the amount of time you have to react and potentially save your own life in an emergency. I always shoot for 3 seconds, which is about 20 car lengths in 70 miles per hour traffic. For people who follow a 3 car lengths rule, you have about 0.4 seconds to react in the same situation, but I'm not that quick under pressure. Pool covers. It's like being wrapped in a bed sheet underwater. You cannot get free, and you cannot scream for help. Once you're in the only way to get out is to be incredibly lucky and get free, or have faith that someone saw or heard you fall in, and hope that they get you in time. It's a lengthy, terrifying, death that's completely avoidable. Rip Titan 4 foot waves, my friend drowned at the beach from a sneaker set. Terrible. Mandolin slicer. Use the hand yard. Or lose the thumb. Stonefish, camouflage fish, very painful venom. Cone snail, orange white cone shaped shell that often looks attractive and entice, and you pick it up. Edit, wow this blew up in only a couple of hours. THX for all the likes I've found your story is so interesting. You can learn about other deadly creatures like these on nature's deadliest, National Geographic. Another edit, wow THX for the award. An unloaded gun or even worse an unloaded gun. There is a reason as to why gun instructors always tell you to treat every firearm as if it was loaded. Petting someone's dog without asking. Too much quick dopamine instant pleasure. When you rely on it, it's not fun. Because eventually those highs wear off and you're left with an even worse depression or state of mind. 
garage door springs. People don't realize just how much tension those things are actually under. Never repair a garage door yourself unless you know exactly what you're doing. Stored energy in them is enough to break bones and sever limbs. Inhaling helium. Spillways. As an engineer, I have seen and understand that they can kill you. I know that when the toe or last half of a spillway is filled and there is a pool at the bottom, a whirlpool can be created. Not the whirlpool you're thinking of at the public pool that spins you around. It's similar but turned on its side. The whirlpool it created will prevent you from swimming away from the spillway or even create waves pushing you down. The water goes down the spillway and then rushes back up where the incoming water pushes it back down again. The force can be so great that you cannot get out. Kids see these spillways as water slides with pools on the bottom. If they are large spillways, do see them as a small waterfall. These hidden whirlpool can kill you. People go down the spillways and get trapped and will drown. They can become extremely dangerous. Well, cows seem pretty harmless, but these guys aren't to be underestimated. I got attacked by a mother one for getting a bit too close to the calf. I was lucky the horns were specifically made to be round otherwise I would have lived with one kidney from then on. Since it rammed into my kidney, but not hard enough to damage thankfully, still hurt like hell after though. Riding a horse. Letting water from a fresh water source up your nose. Most of the time it will be fine, but every once in a while you'll get a brain eating amoeba that has a 99.9% .9 fatality rate. This is in the US as well. Silicon chips. Very safe in the finished product form, but dear god the chemicals involved are dangerous. One component in production is pure hydrogen, and it is the safest one. Another is triclerosylane. Its auto-ignite temp is 40 Fahrenheit. It's combustible on contact with moisture, which includes humidity. It mixes with water, and doesn't manage to explode its temperature skyrockets and the byproduct is hydrochloric acid. I learned this, while working in a polysilicon factory, when they dumped it on my crew from an empty vessel. Cat scratch fever. Yeah the song is pretty cool but that's about it. A stray cat scratched my dad one time and asterisk 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 his asterisk 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 up. Walking up and down house stairs. A human bite. I worked at a kindergarten, and one kid was sometimes super sweet, but sometimes really mean. He'd switch in a second. While I was naming the coloring pages they were about to get he walked up to me, and bit me in the arm. Didn't think it was through, cause no blood. But it started swelling and getting red and the marks were clearly there. Went to the dock right after my shift. He explained a human bite is the second most dangerous bite there is. Got antibiotics but they didn't work. I'm just kept swelling and getting completely dark purple over two days. Doctor sent me to the hospital, where I got strong antibiotics. Basically everything in me was cleaned with that asterisk asterisk asterisk, felt weak for months. It didn't start working by that night is, have to come back and be hospitalized to get my underarm removed. I've shat some bricks there. Never thought a kid's bite could cause this. Luckily the swelling got less and the bruise stopped spreading, so I still have my arm, but that was very close. Edit, for the people who ask me, if I punish the kid, his parents did that for me. My coworker reported the incident to the parents, and it was one of his last days there as they were moving, this was planned, before he bit me. His parents were really sorry and a few days later, when I worked again, it was the last time I'd see him, and the parents brought him towards me, because they wanted him to apologize. My arm was still fairly swollen, and purple at that point, and he was absolutely shocked, that he had been the cause of that. He apologized with tears in his eyes and actually hugged me. He promised me never to bite anyone again, apparently he had bitten his family and even other children before. So far no one had gotten an infection apart from me, and I really think he meant that. Still had a good day with him, but still pretty mad as I was scared my antibiotics stopped working or something, but now that I think back on him, he's not a bad kid, 
just a troubled mind that didn't get the right treatment. But a scare not the less. Answering a seemingly innocent just wanted to see how you are doing, text from someone who is bad for your mental health. My floor when I have socks. Not checking slash changing the tires on your car. Someone back me up on this. You can't just drive around with the same tires on forever. Eventually you'll end up doing donuts in the middle of a wet interstate because your back tires lost traction. Sports gambling apps. Koalas. Just like every other animal in Australia they will kill you if they get the chance. Koalas eat only two things, eulipters and human flesh. Having a small snack before a medical procedure that requires anesthesia. Intubation can cause you to throw up your food and you can joke. Getting in an automobile. Edit, my first award ever. Thank you. As a maintenance man who found a dead guy today, huffing a dust at the do it, kids. Edit, I went to bed and this blew up a little. It's a little messed up cause dude was only one year younger than me, and honestly a cool dude, definitely was not expecting that to happen to him, but, well, it happened because of decisions he made. For those concerned about my mental health, I appreciate the concern, so thank you. I'm alright. This is always a thing that can happen in my work, where you have 60 some odd people of various ages and temperaments all living in a place and you never know if one day 83 year old Jenkins is gonna croak and you're gonna open it up and has been there under shade for two weeks or if you're gonna open a place for a concerned fiancé and find a dude clutching a can of duster. I just let concerned parties deal with their stuff and go about my own work that's the best I can do. For those saying it's obviously dangerous, I am agree with you, but a lot of people don't realize how dangerous it is. My friends used to huff duster when we were out of pot, when we were teenagers and it always scared the asterisk 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 out of me, but they would always say stuff like it's not like it's heroin, or whatever, to minimize concern they were lucky they weren't this guy. He also had no idea he was gonna take that huff and that would be it for him, until his fiancée found him 18 hours later. Oil painting in a closed studio. Starting a car in a closed garage. Edit, close not close. 